have uh, Glenn uh, Embridge. He's, uh, in, in, he integrates science and mathematics with the principles of integrative uh, learning in lab school in Purs. I don't know if I pronounced correctly in Belgium. He has also been in, involved in, uh, in Flemish uh, ESF support projects called Warm uh, Schools. And also he developed that uh, together with uh, Karen, uh, the pilot teachers uh, for the learning next scenario. He's also a lead teacher on the three R's. And we have also Karin van den Aden. She's a science uh, teacher at the, uh, and Euro uh, European project coordinator. Sorry, I cannot see myself. At uh, Sinta Donas. Dona I cannot pronounce this. You have to help me, Karin. <laughs> Since Donatus Institute, it's called. Thank you. <laughs> she holds a master in science in biology and a C-level certificate for IBDIS uh, for teachers. And she's also one of the ones that have developed this pilot uh, lesson uh, and has been presented in different uh, meetings. She's also a lead teacher of these three arts projects. So now the floor is yours. Okay, great. Thank you. I will share as well my screen. So I hope now you can see. Uh, so yeah, we are um, presenting you our learning scenario, but to uh, present it, um, we actually um, are asking you to uh, act like you are students. But I guess Glenn will explain that to you first. Glenn? Right. Are you there? Okay, great. Thank you. Good evening, class. <laughs> We'd like to welcome you to this three hours learning scenario in the context of animal welfare in science. Your critical thinking will be stimulated with a discussion on emotions versus facts. So we have adapted our original learning scenario to a digital context in order to give you an idea of what it can be like with your pupils in a, in a real classroom. So from now on, you are no longer a critical teacher but a, a young teenager who wants to learn with an open mind. So you can always share your comments or criticisms with us when the learning scenario is over. First of all, because this is an interactive lesson, we would like to ask you to check if you have another device nearby to participate. Um, a smartphone will do. We will start uh, with a, a little warming up session with the Kahoot to activate your knowledge about animal testing. So. For some of you, this will be a repetition of what you already know. For others, it's a first introduction to the topic. So Karen, the floor is yours. Thank you. So the little test, the um, Kahoot we're gonna do is to see how much you know about animal testing. Dear students, please remember you're a student. You will uh, find the link to the Kahoot uh, just on top of the screen here. And I hope I shared my sound because that's the part I love on Kahoot. A little song so you can take the qr code or um you just go to kahoot.it i think leo both was going to share the link as well in the chat but i don't really think it's necessary if you go to kahoot.it you can use the game pin that's on uh, the screen or you just uh, have the qr code on top here Normally, my dear, my dear students, I ask you to use your own name, but for once you can use a nickname as well, of course. Okay, we have 10. I don't see anyone else coming. So... so sorry, I have some travels to enter, I don't know why. <laughs> You don't the code need... is the code is three two two zero two, right? Yes, I cannot enter. You cannot enter. Did you no. did you scan the code or did you? I'm trying to put it manually. Okay, it's, okay, now thank you. Sorry, code, sorry. Yeah? It's with our spaces. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. So <laughs> these are a lot of nicknames. I would throw you out, but we don't have the time today, so we will. We will be playing anyway with the with the nicknames. Uh, of oh, still some some people entering. A champ boy. 
happy boxer. <laughs> okay, I think we have enough players now. The rest is too late. Sorry, off we go. The uh, it's only eight questions, and think about it. Your students, of course, you know because you are students. First question: What's the definition of animal testing? Is it changing an animal's food? As you know, on Kahoot, you can just press the, the right color on your phone or I don't know what device you play on. It's, of course, experimenting on animals. That's animal testing. It was an easy one to start, but you only have 20 seconds to answer. I think some people did not uh, push the button in time, but maybe it's better <laughs> for the second question. Erwan is winning. Second question, since when has man used animals in experiments? You only have 10 seconds to answer, so pl please quick, quickly click. Yeah, that's uh, already more answers. Uh, it's since 400 before Christ, indeed. Uh, of course, lots of other experiments were uh, afterwards. Um, Erwan is still winning. He's, he knows how to click fast, in, even on Kahoot. The faster you click, the higher you score. Which products are tested on animals somewhere in the world? The world, as you can see the question. So it's not only your country or Europe, it's the whole world in this question. And indeed, if we look at the whole world, so not talking about countries, uh, then it's all of the above. Of course, in uh, Europe, that's no longer the question. Uh, next, still Erwan winning. Next question. How many animals are used in experiments all over the world again uh, each year? Less than 1 million or more than 1 million? Indeed, if we look at the whole world and we do count all animals, so also uh, the ones that we maybe think are very small, then it's over a million, of course. It's, uh, it's always the same people. Which animals are used for scientific purposes? Which are, we mean, uh, research and testing. Is it birds and mice, dogs and monkeys, frogs, or everything? If you if you were attentive at the, the uh, former lesson, the lesson of Jenny, then you would have seen indeed that it was all of the above animals that are used for testing. Oh, Pierre is coming in the high scores. Drugs that pass animal tests are always safe, and then we mean safe for human use. And indeed, that's a false um, answer because, uh, no, the answer is false. <laughs> that's the right answer. Um, that's uh, because, yeah, sometimes people react still a, a bit different uh, than uh, animals on the on the drugs, so false was the right answer. And it's uh, almost the last question. Aaron is winning the whole time. What are possible alternatives for animal testing? We also saw that in a former lesson, the lesson of Marcella, I think. So if you were uh, attentive, yeah. And most people were, it was indeed all of the above um, alternatives. Oh, young boy, I don't know who that is. Should animals be used for scientific and commercial testing? Yes, no, or under certain circumstances. And this is, yeah, where we say it's all right, because that's why what our debate is about, of course. Eh? We will have a debate in a, a later in this lesson, uh, we will. Um, and that's the question is uh, if animals still should be used uh, in science or not. So that's why, since we want to have an open debate, um, we, uh, we said that all answers were right here. 
And the winner is with a beautiful prize, a young boy. If, mm -hmm. if it was in real life, you would get a prize. <laughs> okay, great. So I will uh, quit the Kahoot here because otherwise it will keep singing. No, I just. So th these questions were especially to raise the students' awareness about animal testing. And you, of course, as a teacher, you have the choice uh, between each question to do a little mini teaching uh, if they need some more explanation. So a first question to you, who noticed pictures of cute animals during the Kahoot? Please raise your hand. <laughs> of course you did, but this was quite an easy one to see who is still awake. Now I have a another question, a little, a little bit more difficult. Why? Why do you think some animals are cuter than others? So you can just write your answer, answer in the chat. I give you uh, a little minute to think about it. Why do we think some animals are, cuters, are cuter than others? Okay, they smile. Fairy animals look like us. They look more human. They look like babies because of the way they look, big eyes, like babies, because they are more beautiful, <laughs> the shape of their face. So we have some good students here. Um, some of the answers uh, that I read here are spot on. So why we feel some animals are cuter than others, that actually that is defined by the, the science of cuteness. It's also known as the, the Kindchen Prinzip. So the next video, video will explain this. And we watch the Science of Cuteness video. Now, I hope you uh, see how um, animals uh, are easily compared to uh, humans. And uh, normally, I would ask you to, oh yeah, it goes, um, to um, scan this QR code and also join a Padlet because the uh, assignment was to let you look for advertisement where uh, they use this Kindchen principle um, for us to, uh, to make us buy things in advertisements. But uh, the lesson is, uh, it has to be a little shorter, Glenn, my co-teacher. I hope you don't mind if we uh, skip this assignment now. You Fine. see, 
you see some uh, advertisements uh, your colleagues from the other group um, find found, okay, it's in Dutch, but it doesn't matter, but they found all these um, cute animals uh, drinking water or uh, a horse and a dog used in a beer commercial. So then you can see uh, the Kindchen principle is used in commercials also the horse or the dog doesn't have anything to do with um, beer, of course. They use it because of the small, soft dogs that make dog, it makes it cute, and that's why people buy beer. If we have time, uh, the next lesson, we will definitely let you make this padlet. But today we have to do the real, the hard work. Um, mm -hmm. So we will have to uh, give you another assignment. Glenn will explain to you. Yeah, now you know that the Kindchen principle is responsible for our emotions towards animals. Um, we can get to the core of our learning scenario. So in a minute, you will be assigned to a breakout room to debate a thesis. We will give a signal when you can uh, uh, split to the breakout rooms. And our thesis is the next one. Should animal testing be forbidden? Yeah, there's uh, four breakout rooms. Uh, and if you are in, you will see the, the title of the breakout room is the, um, the person you are in the debate or your group is. So you will be or a patient with an untreatable disease or an animal rights activist, uh, a CEO of a big pharma company or a scientist in biomedical research. That's the four breakout rooms. Uh, that's the four people for the debate. Yeah, so you can formulate arguments during the next eight minutes uh, and share them in a Padlet. Um, try to support your arguments with an image or a picture. It's possible, uh, but you, uh, you don't have to, but you can do it. You can like arguments from uh, other participants in the breakout room. So if you like an argument, please do so. It's like the, the Facebook principle, but with a little heart you can click on. And after eight minutes, um, the group has to select uh, five, the top five of their arguments uh, from the Padlets. So if you select the top five of the, the arguments, then you can also choose a spokesman in your group and they will uh, defend uh, these arguments afterwards in the central Zoom to uh, defend their point of view in their particular, uh, particular role. So voila, we, then now we can go to the breakout rooms. Okay, I hope everyone is back from the um, little uh, meeting rooms and I hope it also worked out to share the Padlets. I had to, I didn't find the link, Leobov, so, but I did find it in your mail, so it worked out for us. So now we uh, will have um, the uh, little debate, so we would like to hear each spokesman, so from the four groups. Uh, you have one small minute to defend your thesis from your point of view. We will start, if you don't mind, with the CEO of the big pharma company, because the CEO is very busy and he might... <laughs> <laughs> you, Lisa. Yes, I'm the CEO. I have to work hard. <laughs> no, I actually have to leave in four minutes. Well, I'll read some of our arguments. Uh, we, I haven't prepared this, uh, but uh, we have to find cures for diseases uh, that will save lives and suffering. Uh, we will still be in the pande pandemic uh, if it wasn't for the vaccine of COVID-19. Uh, and uh, my grandmother has a hip replacement and uh, the, 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 it was animals were used to test devices like this. And uh, that makes my grandmother more, into life the way she she was when she was younger. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello. Okay. 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 That was my my minute. Thank you. Thank you, Miss CEO. Then we would like to hear the the arguments. We're uh, thinking about your arguments, and we have to listen very carefully because there will be a little mentimeter afterwards. Um, a patient with an untreatable disease who uh, is presenting the patient. Oh. Thank you. We had, uh, uh, yeah, so um, we brought the question, uh, and obviously, I, there's a condition that uh, we need, I need treatment for. And I am really hope that there's a good research that uh, will help uh, the disease. 
but it's important that this is done without the cost of more animals. Uh, and this is done using approaches that hopefully won't harm other beings, other animals. And if it has to be done with the animals, that this is done fully controlled and fully regulated. But I'm aware that um, I wouldn't like to that to be done at any cost to other lives uh, and having a good knowledge of what is done and a good understanding with a good communication to, the, to myself as a patient of how um, this is going to convey or be, you know, how they're going to use the animals in this research or non-animal or other, other approaches that may be better. Uh, and hopefully this will help to, to find a cure. Okay, great. Thank you. Those are some uh, more great uh, arguments. Uh, now we listen to the animal rights activist who would uh, be the spokesman of this group. Yeah, that's me. So, and of course, as animal rights activists, we are completely against um, animal experimentation um, because it's unethical. So, um, so we support no, no use of animals at all. Um, and no species is of course superior to the other. So we are we are fighting for equal rights for all species. And um, and using rats, uh, for example, in, in animal experimentation. So a rat is not a seventy kilo. Um, so no. People are not uh, people are not seventy kilo rats, so results are not um, transferable to humans. And it's known that some medicines are toxic to animals, um, but beneficial to humans. And we also know that some medicines that are tested successfully on animals are not effective on humans. Um, so at all, it's not justified to use animals uh, in research and do harm to them. Yeah, you have, of course, a lot of arguments as you are an activist. Great, thank you very much. And then we listen to the last uh, one, the scientist in biomedical research who would represent them. We didn't decide, uh, and uh, we didn't decide who was the spoke, uh, spokesman. Uh, um, anyway, uh, I could, I can, can talk. If the other uh, agree, I don't know. Yes, um, you will do um, great. Emma. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Ah, okay, <laughs> <laughs> we uh, decided uh, we are not against the use um, of animals, so uh, they shouldn't not uh, uh, forbidden, but they should be uh, regulated uh, with the uh, uh, refinement, uh, reduce and replace uh, principles uh, um, in the respect of these uh, three R's principles. Um, uh, one of the uh, argumentations that we uh, carried. Uh, um, to support um, our claim and uh, are, for example, I'm reading that um, um, although we can never be 100% uh, uh, sure after animal testing that the product procedure is 100% uh, safe for humans, we have reduced the risk of harm to humans dramatically. Uh, uh, the other one is the organs on a chip have no immune systems. Another one question is that um, only animals offer enough complexity for many research questions. Uh, another one that uh, animals have a shorter life cycle than humans, uh, so animal models can be studied throughout their whole lifespan and across several generations. And this is important to understand how disease proceeds. Um, so those are one of the strongest arguments that we, we found to defend this, uh, this thesis, but it uh, was not easy because okay. uh, of course there no. are pro and cons. Yeah, of course, of that's, that's definitely, the, but you had some uh, great arguments as well. So now we could start a discussion, but it would lead us too far where you can uh, react to each other's arguments, but we will um, get uh, to the uh, quick part here. We, um, you heard a lot of arguments. Some of the arguments were more based on emotions and others were more based on facts. Uh, and the question now to you is, uh, what do you think, um, which group do you think, or which uh, spokesman here, uh, presented the best or the most uh, factual arguments? So if you use this QR code, or Leobov, if you put the link in the chat, uh, the Mentimeter link, 
then uh, thank you very much. Then we uh, can go uh, to the vote. Uh, this one is it, who used the best factual arguments? That is the question here. I hope it's, it connects to the QR code and the link that you will send, but you can just go if on your phone to menti.com and use the code above, then you can see it as well. And now if you go to this website and use this code, then you would see the four groups, I hope, and you can vote. But the question is not who's the winner of the debate. The question is who used the best factual arguments. I hope this works out for everyone. I don't know how long it takes to do the voting. So we take a look. I see David is still <laughs> putting on the thing, so I don't want to to uh, to look yet to see the result of the voting. Okay, the best factual arguments. I hope I hope it works out now. Um, are used by the scientists in biomedical research. Uh, it was le uh, least emotional, <laughs> yeah, I think. Indeed, I was in the CEO group, so I can say it myself. We were thinking about our grandmother's hip, um, but uh, that's uh, indeed the uh, winner uh, of, not of the debate, but of the use of the most factual arguments. Glenn, are you still there? Yes, I am. I am. Congratulations to our winner. Um, so we have uh, debated one thesis, but in our actual learning scenario, we have lots of theses you can choose from to debate. So it doesn't have you don't have to stick with just this one argument. But as you have experienced, this is this is not a lesson in which students can lean back and and listen to what the teacher has to say or take a nap. Um, this approach requires an active participation of pupils which is the, the general focus of problem-based and uh, project-based learning. Uh, we believe this approach where uh, pupils have the ownership of their learning process is the best option uh, for a change in students' attitudes and their behavior toward, towards an animal, uh, animal testing-free future. Um, uh, to, oh, I yeah, was, yeah. I'm still in the... Thing, yeah. uh, to make um, to share this learning scenario, we actually made a website. You can also see the QR code of the uh, website. But I guess I sent the link as well, um, Leo Boff, and you might still um, put it in the chat, or we can send it. Um, it's in the PowerPoint, uh, the QR code anyway. So um, we. Um, uh, made this website not only with the um, learning scenario uh, we did now, which in which I mean uh, we still have the warming up and the Padlet uh, and the um, signs of cuteness, but the third part where now we, we had the debate, actually we also made two other things. Um, and uh, the first of those two things is um, uh, uh, Socratic, no, sorry. The first of those two things is the play decide game. It's actually more a card game. A debate is more like for elder students we have, that's the feeling we have. Uh, and for the young ones, uh, it's like uh, a play decide is a game where you have um, certain uh, sentences on, on the cards and they can um, use those uh, cards to, um, to uh, use use them as arguments, so it's it's a bit easier. It's more for the younger um, students. Uh, the nice thing is that they see issues from a different perspective um, than their own because they have to play like they're someone else as well, just like here in the debate. Um, and then they have to have like this discussion, but the cards will help them to get to a consensus. 
um, and then uh, yeah, it's some something that uh, helps them to make a discussion uh, not about shouting <laughs> arguments, but really come to a consensus. That's the first one, and Glenn will explain the other uh, the third yeah, option. We also have a third option, the last one. That's more like a Socratic seminar. We think that is for the older students. Um, so, so they discuss an article concerning animal testing in science. And after reading this article, the students prepare some open-ended questions by themselves. And with this preparation in hand, the, the, the students use their arguments. And, and so a Socratic seminar starts. And as we have experience, it becomes pretty vivid very quickly. And the challenge for you as a teacher is, is to release control and just watch the beauty happening in front of you. So voila, it was our learning session. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, thanks a lot for your attention. So class dismissed. Thanks. <laughs> That's very really nice. Thank you very much. Uh, well, now we have time. Well, we, we passed the time, but if people still have questions, uh, now is a good time. I uh, someone want to ask uh, to any of the speakers. I see that Adrian, I know, maybe you were, are you raising your hand, Adrian? Yes. No, I was, okay. I was just clapping. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, uh, is there any question? If not, uh, I have a few questions. I, I, I want to ask uh, Conrad uh, before, um, because you were talking about to uh, explain about the different new technology. Conrad, are you still with us? Let me know. Okay, so maybe not. And Con yeah. Conrad is there, but I, I, he seems to be on on mute. No worries. I have all the questions for Emma. Emma, when you were um, talking about, you know, when you enter into the rooms and uh, people have to find things related with, with refinement, uh, I guess the, the teacher has to have the knowledge to after point into the different refinement uh, uh, things that you can observe. So that means that the teacher need to kind of have uh, deep prior, knowledge. Yes, a yeah. prior knowledge. Uh, uh, yes, it's a something. It's a sort of a prerequisite, prerequisite also for for the students. But it's not more so that they they know all the um, the methods for refinement because uh, it's also intuitive to understand uh, why uh, they can uh, uh, reduce the the, uh, the pain in the animals. Uh, the the tools that we find in the rooms. Uh, anyway, yes, a, a short introduction is. Uh, uh, is uh, suggested, is uh, strongly suggested, uh, um, but uh, not so so deep and so much. Something uh, uh, to introduce the students uh, uh, to this activity in uh, the right way, so they can. Uh, uh, but anyway, you find also the resources, the other links in the room, so you are helped, you are supporting the in the in the task because you have uh, all the information you need uh, uh, to answer to the. Uh, to accomplish uh, the task. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? I, I see that Conrad is back, David, if, if you would. I, I have a lot of questions, I can keep going, but uh, I want to leave uh, the floor to other people also. I'm uh, quite curious. Um, it, it is, Conrad, I have a similar question to Emma. So I was wondering, because you, in, in your presentation, you are explaining about the different new technologies. So is it in the in the lesson already described these new technologies as, as an example, or the teacher need to kind of learn all these new technologies that you are gonna use for the lesson? Um, I think for, if I understood the question properly, well, uh, I think most teachers would have to um, do some research, research for themselves about these technologies because they're not exactly part of mainstream biology so uh yes in fact in our learning scenario there is some remote preparation that uh, teachers would need to do for themselves before they are actually going to do for the students but for the students it would be introduced as a novelty in other words they would have to look up information guided 
uh, about the particular technology. It's not like there's going to be a lesson about it. Otherwise, there's no point for them to do, you know, a mm -hmm. group work and to do research. Thank you. Jordi, are you clapping or you want No, to I haven't. Sorry, I have a question. Sorry, I just went in the wrong place. It's my, my screen is very small. Sorry. I have a question uh, for, I think it was Glenn. So in the video that you talk about the emotion, the connect, I can't remember the right wording, the connectivity on emotions uh, based on the physicality of the animal. I had a question regarding, I mean, fish are also very important. Uh, insects are very important. So how that conveys in your discussion to the students, because it's not about um, I can understand there's more connectivity with dogs, but actually research with dogs is very limited. So whereas there's a lot of work with fish uh, and with frogs. So uh, that's a bit of a complex argument because actually we should care about all equally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the purpose of the video is especially to, to raise the awareness why they, they like some animals, why they want to pet animals, some and others not. Um, there's not really another goal uh, with, with that video. And subconsciously, we all know that, but it doesn't, uh, it, it, it's a good idea to, to, to make them aware before we continue the, the process in the learning scenario. I don't see any other goal of it. And actually it's nice to, 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 um, to, 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 to speak out loudly that it's really a signs of cuteness. It's a, it's a, it's a, there are scientific papers about the topic, uh, uh, about the Kindchen Prinzip. I believe it's a German uh, discovery. Um, so it's nice to make them aware about uh, the concept. That's uh, the purpose of the video. There is a video from, it's in America, you sit in the airport, I can't remember. It's from the uh, PETA, I mean, it's from PETA um, in America. But it's really interesting because it changes from faces of animals to faces to humans. Yeah. And then it's really interesting because then you see the connectivity. Yeah. Uh, and actually, I think there's a frog. So it's actually interesting because then from humans, you go to animals. And actually, I mean, I may disagree with some of the things from PETA, but it's nice, this conception of visualization. So actually, you could use something like that. It's very nice. So thank you. Thank you uh, for uh, sharing this, Glenn. Uh, thank you, too. <laughs> Any more questions? I guess if not, uh, Jenny, do you want to say something? I, I would like to say a, a few concluding words, if I, if I may. So I would firstly like to dearly thank all the speakers for the fantastic presentations and the uh, discussions and, and uh, learning exercises that we have gone through. Uh, your efforts have been very appreciated from our side. I would also like to thank the organizers, so David and Marcel, for all the support around uh, setting this uh, workshop up. Uh, also, great thanks to all the organizers on the European School Net. Uh, that has been a, a fantastic support in, in uh, making this happen. Um, and then, of course, also great thanks to our participants. Last but not least, thank you, Christopher, for the technical support on the back end. Um, and I just want to flag that from, from our side, we have a um, adjunct project to, to this one where we later in the year will have uh, an event from which we will have some further um, three hours promotional videos for a, a broader audience uh, um, kids primarily and um, later in the year also three um, articles covering the three hours <clears throat> that, that will be published in Frontiers uh, for Young Minds. We will also translate these um, into German, French and Italian uh, for dissemination in, in schools. Um, well, our goal, obviously, in Switzerland, but we would be very happy to share this further uh, with any of you that are interested in accessing that. So with that, I, I think we can conclude. I'm sure everyone is, is very hungry <laughs> and uh, um, I, I really thank all of you for having taken part in, in this uh, workshop. So thanks a lot and um, good night. Wish you all a, a good night. Thanks to everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everybody. You Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 B